live now and going, guys. <laughs> Feels like the first time. <laughs> because it is the very first time. <laughs> Our next band name. <laughs> All right, everybody. I am Liz Merrick. This is Sugar Geek Show Live. I've done lives in the past, but we're upping our live game. That's right. I have a co-host. You might recognize him. Hello, I'm Dan. I am someone who doesn't know hardly anything about cake decorating. Also known as a cake husband. Yes, <laughs> but I have delivered a lot of cakes and I've ate a lot of cakes. A so lot of cakes. That almost makes me an expert, right? And you've heard me talk a lot about cakes. Yes. So you kind of have some understanding of cake lingo. Mm -hmm. That's but right, yes. you're not like, I mean, you're not like me. Like I know lots about cake. <laughs> right, right, and um, I get I get people talking to me on Facebook and stuff, and I kind of keep my eye in the cake community, but I might not necessarily know every th single thing there is to right. know. So, um, so you're our like re resident noob, cake noob. Yes, right? yes, the resident, um, not a dumb person. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> But an inexperienced person that just doesn't know anything, right? All right, that's it. You're fired. <laughs> okay, so in these lives, uh, what we want to do is answer a few questions that we see a lot in our group, Cake Noobs, or on Sugar Geeks, and um, sort of do more than just type out a explanation of what you know the process is of something, and really just like go over some stuff that people have really wondered about and um, make it into like a show. Why not? Yeah, sometimes people need more than just a couple sentences um, mm -hmm. to explain something. I mean, uh, if you've ever learned anything um, uh, from like pictures and books and then you've learned from an instructor, you know that learning from, from life and just watching somebody, there's little things that you pick up that you just can't get any other way. Right. So we thought, why not just make a show out of this right. and um, help some of you people that have questions about, uh, well, what are we talking about today? So today, we are talking about something that I see that comes up in the groups all the time. Uh, what's the difference between cake flour, AP flour, it's called all-purpose flour, and box mix? Not, not attack power flour. <laughs> it should be called attack power flour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be the AP flour carry, yep. And, uh, you know, just to confirm, you know nothing about this stuff. You you, I, you know a few things that you've maybe seen, but... I thought AP standard for attack power, so <laughs> yes, I don't know very Video much. Video game nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I thought it would be fun um, to not only teach you, but teach you guys uh, about the differences in cake flour and have a little taste test. Oh. So you can taste the differences and explain how you... Because I know what I think, but I've been to pastry school and a lot of people will say things like, well, I make box mix and, I, you know, it tastes great. Or I make AP flour and it tastes great, you know, or I don't like the taste of cake flour or something. So. And I've ate a lot of cake, so I'm pretty good at but you're, I'm a, I'm a but cake you're, eating expert. What's your favorite flavor of cake? Uh, well, for me, Liz made a cake for me for my birthday really early on in her career. It was a Mario Brothers cake. It had peach filling. And it was Funfetti, and that was my favorite mm. cake that I've ever <laughs> had. Michelle agrees. She's like, that so sounds good. I'm a big good. Funfetti fan. Big Funfetti Ooh, fan. Ooh, Funfetti fan. That'd be a great t-shirt. Oh. There you go. Oh, yes. sweet. Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, that's what we wanna, I wanted to talk to you guys about today. So first of all, don't look at these cakes here yet. Just ignore these cakes. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the different types of flour, right? Okay. Flour, F L O U R, not flowers. Oh, we don't make these from from no. dandelions. No, that's, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah. So cake, there are actually more than three types of flour. There's actually bread flour, pastry flour, cake flour, AP flour, uh, self rising flour. I stopped listening. <laughs> like three, I, think. I think that's usually how it goes. So um, in general, let's just talk about what most people are familiar with, which is box cake. Okay. What is box cake? What is box cake? Box cake is like pre-made, uh, you know, ingredients that have everything in it. It's sort of like self-rising flour. It has all of your um, chemical leaveners, uh, like baking powder, baking soda, um, sugar, flour, all of that, just in all your dry ingredients. And what you do is you just add in your wet ingredients, which is either water or milk and eggs, and you just stir it up and boom, you have cake mix. Oh, okay. So I think pretty much all cake decorators start out with using box cake. It's easy, it's reliable, it's really hard to mess up. And um, 
not very many people understand how to do a uh, scratch made cake, okay, right? Okay, yeah. So uh, I, for one, did not know how to do scratch cake at all when I first started, which I think a lot of cake decorators do. They start off with just like, I want to make a cake. And they're like, try scratch cake one time. They're like, that is terrible. <laughs> it probably has something to do with, I need to make a cake by Friday mm. and it's Wednesday. Mm. Yeah, that's how usually make, the first cake order happens. I'll just right? make scratch cake. It'll be so easy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> my first scratch cake that I ever made was for my best friend Stephanie's birthday, but way back before I even knew that I wanted to be a cake decorator. And I kid you not, it was like a brick. If she was here, she could attest to how disgusting. She's such a good how friend. How much she fake smiled through eating she, it. No, no. She's <laughs> such a good friend, she didn't even pretend. She was like, this is horrible. <laughs> oh. Well, that's when you know you have a really It good was friend. chocolate. It yeah. was horrible. It was disgusting, you know. And so that was my first experience with scratch-made cake, and I gave up and then forever used box mix. And then when I started uh, decorating cakes full-time, I and, used... And telling everybody that you're making cakes from scratch... No. <laughs> I thought I thought like it would be like, well, you know, it's finally when I started telling everyone I was making cakes from scratch. Well, then I had to learn my no, cake recipes no, no. that come from scratch. This you is news to you me. You can't so. say that they're made from scratch. You say they're freshly baked. Because that's oh. not that's not a lie. <laughs> oh, okay. So they're freshly baked. At some point, you said that they were from, from, box. from scratch. Right? Well, okay. So you're you're getting a little ahead of my my um timeline here but yes I did oh, okay I did eventually start telling people they were made from scratch but I had to go to pastry school to learn how to do that I see I so see. when I was in pastry school which is where I met my lovely assistant Michelle who's <laughs> running the camera on the other side that was Oregon Culinary Institute right yes I went really to really good bakery after a couple years really of good. baking I went to Oregon Culinary School and took the pastry degree program where uh, my whole brain was in a, like I was like the matrix of like you know how to make cake. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that was really You're exciting. You're doing kung fu cake after that, right? I know how to make dough boss sponge. <laughs> that's that's impressive if you, you've been to culinary school. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Michelle's like, whoa. <laughs> so that was where I first learned about even that other cake flowers even existed. Oh, okay. And and then my brain was like, oh, that's why my scratch cake didn't turn out. So the difference between uh two different types of cakes is you can make a cake with AP flour, which is what box cake is made with. And it just oh, okay. means all purpose flour. It's used for just in general, all different types of cakes and, um, cake flour. What it is, is it is, if you have like a, Oh man, I need like handouts. Let's say like, this is a, a wheat okay. seed, right? You that's have that's the, a really big wheat seed. Really big. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> wheat ever. Okay. So there's this outer part of the wheat. And then there's an inner center, kind of like an avocado. Okay. But imagine that the inner part of this avocado is the most delicious part of the seed, right? It's tender. Okay. It's very soft. Mm -hmm. And um, all-purpose flour is made with, I believe, both parts of this, right? Mm -hmm. Both parts of this seed. So it's got a little bit of the harder outside and the center. People are looking up all this stuff on Wikipedia right now. To see I actually right. didn't know I was going to say this. I was like, oh, crap. I didn't look this up. <laughs> uh, to the best of my knowledge, yeah. <laughs> my chef is like, mm, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so um, cake flour, though, is made with just the center. So it's a very softer oh, okay. version of flour. And what does that mean? So the outer part of this seed has something called gluten in it, and that's what cake is made of. That's what bread is made of. That's what all baked goods are made of. That's that stuff that you're allergic to. <laughs> right, right. I'm always so surprised. I mean, I don't know anything about cake decorating, but I know what gluten is. And, and a lot of people I talk to, they're like, I'm gluten-free. And you're like, well, what is the gluten? And you've seen Jimmy Kimmel where they've done, like, you know, surveys with people on the street, and they're like, I'm so, totally gluten-free. And then they don't even know what it is. And it's right. like... It's just a part of the wheat. Yes. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's just the the wheat particle. Right. So um, the the thing is is that the more gluten you have in something, the more structure it has. So for something like bread. Oh. Okay. Think about how chewy and yummy and man, I'm really hungry. Pretzels. Pretzels. <laughs> pretzels. Right? Those probably bagels, have a lot of gluten. Pizza. In them. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you would use something that's called bread flour that has a lot of that gluten part of the wheat. And then cake flour, you want it to be, you want it to have structure. You don't want the cake to collapse, but you right. also want it to be very tender. So cake flour is made with a literal different part of the wheat particle, so it doesn't actually have as much gluten in it. So you, it result, you could mix the heck out of this batter, which is what I do with my vanilla cake recipe. Okay. And people very often will under mix it because 
they are scared that it's going to have too much gluten. But it's but it's the thing is is it's made with a different part of the wheat. So in their experience, they're like, oh, I don't want to overmix this cake, and it's going to get tons of holes in it, and it's going to be really tough. But it's the cake flour, right? Okay. So things you would use cake flour for is cakes. Cakes. <laughs> Pastry flour is even more delicate than and, or, and actually very com crumbly it's a pretzels. <laughs> You use pastry flour for things like pastries um, that you want to also have a tender crumb, like shortbread and um, you know more tender types oh, okay. of pastries and stuff. So um, one of the questions we get sometimes is, can you take a, a recipe that has cake flour and replace it with AP flour? Right. I've heard and I've seen on some some threads and stuff that people say you don't need cake flour, you buy AP flour, and I think you mix cornmeal in with it, right? Cornstarch. Cornstarch. Cornmeal is like for pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you make your pizza crust. So you mix, mix cornstarch with the AP flour, and that's just the same as cake flour, right? And it's not the same. You unfortunately can't completely read, you can't make cake flour. It's like um, saying, can you make blue? You know? Right, because you need the you need that inside part of the seed, right? Yeah. yeah. So what the cornstarch does is it kind of replaces some of the flour. So it's like if you have one cup of flour and you take away four tablespoons and you replace it with cornstarch, you still have something in there that is taking up the volume, but it doesn't have any gluten in it. So you're trying to cut the amount of gluten that is in the recipe. But the but the cake flour or but the flour that is still in there still has gluten. So you might have a slightly better texture, but it's lock, not going to be the same. Right, and as far as I know, baking is like a science. Like, the more you change stuff, if you're just barely off, it can actually really change the recipe. Right, right. right. And, that, and that's something we might talk about in another episode, which, by the way, if you guys have ideas that you want for future episodes, burning questions that you really just want explained live, Please leave them in the comments. We'll rewatch this later. And I was thinking it might be fun that if we choose your idea, then we can announce it on the next episode and send you a little gift, maybe a t-shirt. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Little, just a little encouragement because I really want you guys to take advantage of this live opportunity to be like a studio audience, but in the comfort of your home, you know, mm -hmm. asking right, questions. Right. Also, Michelle is here to... Um, ch uh, what I want to not translate, uh, like give us questions. Um, so Michelle, you have a question for me? Yes. So we have, um, one lady asked if, what her name, Debbie, she's like, I may have missed, but is cake flour gluten free? Cake flour is not gluten free. There are gluten free flours though. Um, my favorite gluten free flour is actually called cup for cup, cup number four cup. And the reason I love it is because uh, even though I went to pastry school and I do understand how to make a recipe, I'm not like, um, I'm not super passionate about baking. <laughs> my secret's out. <laughs> and you can literally just take a recipe that you have, like my um, vanilla cake recipe, and take out the flour and then just replace it with equal parts of cup for cup. So it's expensive, obviously, so you definitely need to charge more for gluten-free products, but, and there's a lot of gluten-free cake mixes out there that are really good for that type of thing. Yeah, yeah, well. Bob's Red Mill makes a lot of really great products like mm -hmm. that. I think they have a couple flowers that are um, specifically gluten-free. I don't know them off the top of my head, but. And some people will ask in the cake groups, what's a good recipe for gluten-free this, or gluten-free that, and my suggestion is honestly, buy gluten-free box mix because it doesn't have the same sort of preservatives and chemicals that regular box mix has in it. Um, but it has like all of your, I don't know, there, there's certain like gums and stuff that you have to replace if there's no, um, I think it's called xanthan gum that you mm -hmm. have to put into mixes. That's like a thickener, right? Yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. kind of uh, replace the fact that you don't have any gluten in there. So yeah, right. the bonding agent. Yeah, but definitely taste them because some of them have like, you can almost taste like the bean flour or like mm -hmm. the rice flour, depends on what type of flour. Yeah, I always remembered... Um, Whenever we made gluten-free stuff, it always looked like a loogie. So <laughs> it always kind of was like, ooh, I don't know if this is going to turn out. And then you eat it and you're like, oh, yeah, I guess it's fine. Or, ooh, I it still tastes like too. a loogie. Yeah. <laughs> so always always test before you um, you make a cake for a client. Right. Yeah. So, okay. So let's go ahead and start looking in at these cakes. Okay. So we uh, just fast recap here. AP flour, it's got gluten in it. It's got the outsides. It's what box cakes 
uh, box mix uses, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's cake flour, which is like more like the inside of the wheat. Mm -hmm. It's softer. It doesn't have as much structure in it, mm -hmm. but it tastes better, mm -hmm. right? It's and you can tender. only use it in certain recipes. We, we, what we call that is a mouthfeel. Okay. Was so there a third one? Uh, Self-rising flour, which oh, is something okay. that they use in um, the UK. We don't. I don't even think you can buy self-rising flour here. But what oh, it okay. what it is, I, we get this question sometimes: Is cake flour the same as self-rising flour? It's not. Self-rising oh, okay. flour okay. is, I think, just AP flour with the chemical leaveners already added into it. The most important thing, no matter what we just we talk about today, no matter what recipe you use, my suggestion is always. Just use the flour that the recipe suggests. If you have AP flour, use a recipe that calls for AP flour. If you have cake flour, use a recipe that calls for cake flour. Don't try to, to replace things mm -hmm. unless you really know what you're doing because it's, you're just going to make yourself a headache. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. There are so many recipes out there, and I'm going to talk about the recipes that I've used for okay. all those different flours. Cool. Right? All right. That sounds good. All right, then. I need my Ginsu. This is my favorite knife. I've had this knife since before I was a cake decorator, and um, I don't even know if you can buy these still. What's that for? I don't even, I think it's for like picking up meat. Oh, <laughs> but poking it, people. Have you ever seen a Ginsu commercial? This chops cans. Yeah, they're usually cut, cutting through logs and stuff, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, but yeah. anyways, it's, it's, like, it's like the perfect length for um, cutting cakes. Okay. So I'm going to um, go ahead and cut the tops off of these cakes so that we can reveal the crumb. Oh, okay. Which what? one's this? I'm not going to tell you. Oh. <laughs> so uh, what's the crumb? Can you, just a guess. What do you think it is? Well, I, I guess I should, I should look at it first, right? Right. So what I'm doing is, um, I guess you'd call this trimming the cake, which okay. is taking the dome off of the cake so that when you stack oh, it them... Oh, it smells good. <laughs> I haven't had lunch, so... It does Everything looks good. like lunch right now. So these cakes were baked yesterday. I chilled them in the fridge. Um, they are all made with butter, which is an, uh, okay. something that I'll talk about why I do that. But one of them is so that they're not as um, tender. Like butter, when it's cold, it kind of holds everything together. Oh, right. It gets but, hard when, it's, when it gets cold. But then yeah. when it's at room temperature, it tastes delicious, like butter. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, this has got big, big crumbs, right? <laughs> it, you know, like like my technical terms, this it's got one? big crumbs. Oh, it's a big fish. Yeah. Like so I was gonna say, it sounds like abalone. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let me just get this. Okay. Out of here. Um, I, you know, I would I don't know, remember exactly the exact term for this. Um, but this is what you would not call a tight crumb. It's got a lot okay. of yeah. air pockets in there. So Michelle, can you see this? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm zoomed in a little bit there. All right. Hopefully you guys can see this. Um, it's called tunneling. Right. So this has some big holes in it. And um, the crumb is got hole. It's, it's like spongy, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I don't really know okay. what the correct term is. But it's got some sponge to it. So you can see that there is some holes in there. And, um, yeah, that's our first example here. Okay. Right? And then the second one. Let's go to I will, this one. I will wait to guess. Until I see the other ones. <laughs> this one's taller. Yeah, the, the, they're, pay no attention to the height. This oh, is just, okay. you know, different recipes have different amounts mm -hmm. in them. So okay. we're not really talking about the rise. So let's go around the circle. It looks like now. you're working harder on this one. Like, it might be thicker. A little bit more uh, dense, perhaps. Yeah, I, th I think it's dulling the Ginsu. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so this is no the tunneling, really. Uh, uh, well, a little bit, but it's much denser, I would say. All right, let's look at that one. Sometimes, too, I should mention that when you just cut off the very top of the dome, mm -hmm. there will be more bubbles around the top, just because you know the bubbles rise to the surface. Okay. So let's. So we see this here. Let's cut through the side and see. What I'm doing now is called torting, which is where you divide a layer of cake into two layers. Okay. Right? And uh, if we have time, I'm going to sh I'm going to teach you how to do that. Talk about what a cake layer is. <laughs> now, we're not calling anybody out, Dan. Okay. Just because you don't know what a cake layer is, it's okay. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All 
I know sometimes they cut them in half and sometimes they cut them more. Than okay, so this, this is the middle of the cake and you can see a little bit better. Okay. The differences, right? Yeah. This one, this one's got... So as you can see, they both... More crumbly. This one seems a little denser, I would say. A little say. bit denser, a little bit tighter crumb. Still holes, though. Still, mm -hmm. you know, a few little holes. Yep. Not necessarily tunneling. It's just a looser crumb. So mm -hmm. she's got more air pockets and it's a little bit... I don't know. I need to look up some terms here. I'm going to cut this one down the middle, too, and see if it looks any different in the center. Just real quick. Okay. Oops. This one's a lot thinner, so I... Yeah, yeah, I might have uh, ruined it. Eh. <laughs> That's not ruined. I'm I, just kidding. I baked these specifically for today, so... Guess you're having cake for lunch. Oh my <laughs> okay, so it's not really any different. So you can see okay. all the way down through the yeah, cake. Yeah, it's pretty similar. Yeah, so you can hold, hold these up so Michelle can get a look at them. Yep. So you can kind of see. And if you touch them, what can, what do you feel like the... the... Well, this one's hard as a rock. <laughs> a not, rock? Not, not a rock. I just mean like I was surprised at how dense this one Very was. Very firm. You can see I'm actually able to push down on it, but this one... It's a lot more... This one's more like my mattress. <laughs> Why would they know what that's like? Well, uh, you know, <laughs> you got a memory foam mattress, right? Everyone has this is soft. experienced this is memory foam. Right? Okay, so let's now let's do the last one okay. here. And I'm just going to cut straight to the center this time. Whew! Daredevil. <laughs> I was like, Not what? Not even taking the top off? Well, you know, it just seems like a waste to do the top and then... Uh, one thing I mentioned. Either way, we're, we're wasting a lot. This is a little bit of sticky, a little bit sticky oh, on top because okay. um, sometimes when you wrap a cake when it's still warm, the condensation gathers at the top underneath the plastic and will make it a little bit sticky. I don't want anyone to think I'm eating three cakes for lunch today. So I mean, he might. He just doesn't want clear. you to think that he is. Yes. This is a lot easier to do on a turntable. We're doing it live. That's right. <laughs> All right. So you can see oh, this okay. one now. So it's a little bit similar in crumb, right? Yep. And it's not, I would say it's not as dense. A little bit softer. A little bit softer, but not as soft as this. Right. Okay. okay. So let me um, wipe my hand off. <laughs> Didn't think about having like baby wipes on hand. But oh, like, yeah. It's like the ultimate thing that just cleans everything. You just need like an assistant right down here in the island. Today. Michelle, make clean your hands. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so um, now I want you to taste these. Okay. Okay. Ooh. What one you want to start with? Um, I kind of want to start with the hardest, the densest one. I would okay. say. Okay. So I'm just gonna cut you a little. You get a close up right on my teeth. Just. <laughs> <laughs> so let's notice kind of one thing. Okay. What, what, am, you, what, what am I noticing? What do we notice first of all? It looks like a piece of pizza. Sure. I was able to cut this and it stays in one piece. Oh! Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So this is a very clean, very clean cut. Mm-hmm. Oh! It's so good! <laughs> it is good, isn't it? It really it? is. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's enough. No more. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so good. Okay, so that's one. That was so good. All right, and then, so, just because something visually looks like it probably wouldn't be the best, because, right, you would probably think this one's not going to be good. Right, right, well, it's so it seems hard. so dense, Yeah. but it was so good. Right, flavor. Why don't you describe the flavor to me, if you can? The flavor, um, it was good. <laughs> it had a very, um, buttery texture, I would say, but it wasn't, uh, creamy. It was... Dense, but there was a lot of I would say vanilla flavor in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. It felt almost like when you're eating vanilla bean ice cream, um, in terms of that vanilla flavor that kind of like. And I uh, I did you this is, okay I can't say anything yet. Never mind. <laughs> okay, cake number two. Okay. Uh, Pizza slice. Uh, anything to observe about this one that's different from this one? Still able to cut it. We have a nice clean brown cut. on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Well, most cakes are brown on the bottom. <laughs> well, I didn't get an exclamation, so 
It's okay. I would give it a 6 or a 7 out of 10. And why do you say that? What's the difference, as you think? Um, well, the vanilla flavor isn't as strong. Mm -hmm. This one feels a little... Um, the term I would use, because I'm not, I don't really know what I'm saying, is not gourmet. Mm, okay. I would say this one tastes like it's handcrafted or like I'm buying it at a really nice place. This one, kind of, the, the crumb kind of feels like it's kind of mushed. Mm -hmm. So when you're biting into it, you kind of get a little bit of like a... Like a gummy texture? Yeah, gummy. yeah, a little mushy texture. Okay. This one was very crumbly. Palette cleansing water, Dan? I hope this is vodka. <laughs> What if it was? Oh my gosh. I should have done it. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're supposed to just take a sip. <laughs> well, I thought it was vodka, so I drank the whole thing. <laughs> all right, the last one. Do we have any questions, Michelle? Are we okay? No, nope, we're all okay. good. All right, good. It's because we're just explaining so well. Okay, exactly. so this one, still cut yep. as one piece. Yep. Not, not a you, brown bottle. Can you hold that up so you can, they can kind of see the crumb from the side, I suppose? See that? Let me zoom in there really hold, fast. Hold, hold, Okay. Beautiful. Mm. This is my cake plank. <laughs> I'm <it> shaking. <laughs> Alright, that's number three. How do we feel about that? That one tasted really good. I would say it is on par with the first one. Mm -hmm. I did not explode in, oh, like, <laughs> like noises or whatever, but, um, I would say... Could be just you're really excited about cake. I, I'm also hungry, so yeah, yeah. Um, it might be that. I would say that's like an, an 8 or a 9, mm -hmm. and this one was like a 10. Mm -hmm. So Okay, so if I were to describe to you the characteristics of each type of flour and just box mix, let's see if you can guess which one's which. Okay. And you really don't know which ones these are. Like, we're not cheating you. I'm just trying yeah, to prove I, point. <laughs> um, Yeah, I actually had... No okay, idea. so we know AP flour mm -hmm. has a stronger structure. Okay. Right? Yeah. Cake flour has the weakest structure, so it would have mm -hmm. the most tender crumb. And then box mix is made with AP flour, but it also has uh, chemical leaveners and things so that it results in the lightest, fluffiest... So that gives you cancer. No. <laughs> the lightest and fluffiest uh, cake, because that's typically what the average person really thinks about when they think of right, cake. They right. think of like a really super light, fluffy, full of holes, you know, type of... Well, how many people have had a from scratch cake, really, you know? Seems like not as many as you used to. You yeah, know, used to have yeah. like moms and grandmas who made scratch mm -hmm. cake and it was, everybody had that. So I think nowadays most people have box mix and that's sort of their... Um, actually, people probably don't know this, but a lot of bakeries use box mix too. So, I was going to say that too, like Costco cakes mm -hmm. or you know Safeway, Kroger, any yep. of those things. They're probably just using. One box of these times right? we might talk about different shortenings and how we use those in baking, and because um, that's what a lot of bakeries will do. So that might be yeah. something we could go into before. So okay. which one do you think is the box mix? I would say this one right mm -hmm. here, the one that has the um, the kind of tasted. Not gourmet or mushy. You can taste it, right? It kind of tastes mushy. You can kind of taste the chemical in it, too. I think. that That's me. Maybe I just have that. I just didn't taste as much flavor. Okay. It so it just doesn't be. taste like anything, it, it you think? It kind of tasted like more of a texture and less of a flavor. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And this is all just vanilla cake. And the texture right? wasn't that great. So, and then, which one do you think this one is? I would say, so the, the difference is, is one of these is AP flour and one of these is cake flour, yes. right? Mm -hmm. I would guess that's cake flour because I, I thought it was so good, mm -hmm. but I don't know for sure, so. Eh. Oh, no. Fail. This is AP? <laughs> this is AP flour. Wow. And it, um, so it does have a stronger texture. Okay. It does have more body to it, and um, it's not as tender as this cake here. What recipe did you use? This is Yolanda Gamp's vanilla cake recipe. Oh, from How to Cake It. It is my new favorite. Yeah, it's it's really good. <laughs> I I just did you simple syrup it? I did not. Oh, you couldn't have because you just yeah it in front of yeah. So oh, I wow. actually had the simple syrup. So if you guys are familiar with Yolanda, she um, uses like a little squeeze bottle to simple syrup her cakes. So let's I'm gonna put some on here so that you can taste it with the syrup. Okay. The, now the point of this, I know from. Um, Watching Cake Boss with you. The point of this. I don't watch Cake Boss. This was years ago. 
This was like at least five years ago. Yeah, yeah. The point of this is because sometimes these cakes get dry, right? Yeah. So when you do this, it actually helps it stay moist. Yeah, so the deal is is that when you're making certain um, cakes, you know, days in advance or something, you might simple syrup them so that they stay moist for longer. Okay. It's also preservative. Sugar, simple syrup is just equal parts water and sugar. Bring it to a boil, let it cool. And it's basically just adding moisture into the cake, right? Okay. So this type of cake is actually not very moist. Oh. But it has lots of flavor. It did. It had a, a lot of it flavor. It is the first AP flour cake recipe that I've ever had that I was like... I'm sold. I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, this one was almost as good as that one, but this yeah. one just had something about it that was better. Right. So, yeah. th so from a recipe standpoint, this has um, equal parts flour and sugar in it. A lot of sugar in this, a lot of sugar, which sugar tastes really good. Sugar also acts as moisture. So when you have a okay. lot of sugar in something, it tastes moister than this something. This is so moist. Oh, it's so good, so moist. Oh. <laughs> it's the worst word ever. So um, go ahead and taste this with the added sugar to okay. it. Okay. Oh, there man. you go. Gonna have a sugar high. Probably. Now, granted, typically you would simple syrup a piece of cake and it would sit for like at least a day so that moisture goes down into the whole piece of cake. So you okay. might feel like all of this moisture is right up at the top. It's a little too sweet for me. That's what I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I think it's too sweet with the extra simple I'm not, syrup. I'm not drinking Mountain Dew every day anymore yeah. like I used to. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, it's a little if too you sweet. watch how to cake it, she'll just like brr, like simple syrup the heck out of those cakes, and I just really don't think it needs it. Yeah. I don't think it needs it. It has that good flavor. So what I, the reason I started using this recipe was because I needed a cake that was really firm for carving. The Pua Pig, mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah. the, uh, Cake Sculpting 101 on yeah. Sugar Geek Show, and um, it carves so nice, so nice. But uh, it actually was surprisingly very good. So you to can eat. just you can just go like this. It works really well. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, yeah. carving. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just <laughs> cutting stuff. I was gonna use that for something. You ruined it. <laughs> I just, just start cutting it up live. Oh, well, I guess we're doing this now. <laughs> so um, so let me talk about a few different few things in, that all of these have in common. In this box mix. Uh, typically, if you've made box cake, it calls for oil and water. And that's right, yeah. That's easy peasy, right? If you want to make your box cake taste a little bit better than normal, you want to replace the oil with butter. Why? We talked about it earlier. Pop quiz. What uh, happens to butter? It gets hard in the fridge. That's right. And then you take it out, and it gets soft, and it mm. tastes like butter. That's right. Which tastes it better tastes than oil, right? Right. So, if you need to stack your cakes, which most of us are, or carve it or whatever, mm -hmm. then, you know, it'll hold its shape, and then once it comes to room temperature, it tastes good. Uh, same thing with these two cakes, both made with butter. So, okay. those are called butter cakes. I always, I always think it's funny whenever um, people complain about putting butter into a cake. Um, I've seen some people I say, oh, I don't want to do that because butter's bad for you. Oh. It's like, it's a cake. You're going to eat one slice. <laughs> or three. And be name. done with it. <laughs> and, or three cakes, apparently. Um, but you're just going to eat it. It's, it's a delicious dessert. Why wouldn't you want right. it to taste good and use good ingredients? But anyways, that's just kind of my idea. Other difference between uh, these two cakes, this one's not as much sugar. So uh, this one has about probably 80% sugar to flour ratio. Okay. So it's not as sweet. Okay. So it's more tender. It's not as sweet, and but it still has good flavor. These both are made with... Which one has the vodka in it? This one. <laughs> <laughs> These are both made with vanilla, right? That A high quality, good okay. vanilla. This yeah. one's not. Yeah. So they probably put That's some valid. sort of flavoring in here, but it's not vanilla or it's just powdered vanilla. Do we just know. do we just push this off the table right now into the trash can? Get out of it. Okay, now we can't we can't be putting down box mix because some people do use box mix and it's fine. Like okay. If you want to use box mix, that's totally up to you. I'm if, not putting you down. If you want now Liz didn't say this, this is just me. If you want a gummy crumb that doesn't taste very good and doesn't taste like vanilla and doesn't make your guests go Oh! oh then box mix is for you. So this will be the last show that we do with Dan Merrick. 
<laughs> I'm known to just kind of say how whatever. How are we doing on time, Michelle? We are doing pretty good. What time is it? Can you say on the uh, the I, the laptop it should say what the time is. It doesn't on here. Oh, 27 minutes. Oh, okay, cool. Huh? We have 27s left, or we've been on for 27 minutes. Only 27 minutes. Oh my. Yeah. God. See, I told you it goes by really, really fast. <laughs> Okay, so keep an eye on the feed. Make sure there's not any questions anybody need um, to answer as far as this part goes because we're moving on to something else. Okay, so... Segment two. So the AP flour, I was surprised that was actually a really good recipe. Mm -hmm. And that's Yolanda Gamps. Yep, vanilla cake vanilla recipe. Vanilla cake recipe from How, How to, to Cake, cake it. it. Yep. It's a YouTube oh, channel. And so th this recipe here is actually a different cake flour recipe than the one I usually use. It's oh, okay. um, one from actually our culinary school. So it's, I was testing it out to see if it was a little bit Firmer than okay. the one I am, yep. I would say it's comparable, okay. um, but it's just it's just a different mixing method basically. Okay. But this is the cake flour, this is the AP flour, this is the box mix. Just this, I I think that the main problem with box mix outside of taste is just that it's so spongy. It's, it doesn't look very carvable. Yeah, when you go ahead and you you stack, unless you're Timbo and he has magical carving powers that makes mm -hmm. his cakes not compress. I don't know what he does, but um, he puts what a burger on them. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Timbo. <laughs> um, typically, when you stack the the cake box, all of those holes and things they compress. So you end up with like um, bubbles underneath your fondant. You oh. end up with things kind of crumbling off when you're carving. I once had a friend who was making a um, Lego Man cake, and she used box mix for the leg, and the, he ended up you know, a little gimpy off to the side because it was compressing under the weight of everything. Even with a structure, it was compressing under the weight of itself. Wow. So just, you know, if you stack up more than one layer of cake, it compresses under itself. Yeah. So. He's having issues. It was, it was very, you know, not good. So if you've ever seen how to cake it, she will literally stack this cake like five cakes tall, no structure. It, mm -hmm. It's just so strong, it supports itself. So it's really a really good recipe. So, oh, okay. Yeah, That's so this great. is a really good one for carving. I would say that this one is good for more like wedding cakes. Mm -hmm. It's definitely strong enough to hold within itself and to, um, um, you know, it's not gonna get bubbles or anything because it doesn't have very big holes, but it's not going to be getting blowouts and stuff like the box mix does. And because it's more tender, it has sort of that more like high-end flavor as far as like gourmet. Well, I feel like you're just grinning like the Cheshire cat right now. Sorry. Like you got something to say. Oh, no, I was just thinking about how much I made fun of the, the box mix and how bad I was feeling. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine you're like someone that's like all you do or something, you know, and you're like... Bring it down, Dan. Bring Dan it down. doesn't like this, you know. Yeah. Yep. So we have a couple of questions. One of them is, if we reduce the sugar in the recipe, will it affect the cake? Absolutely. So as Genius Dan here stated before. <laughs> genius as in not genius. If you're, if you're, what well, you like to cook though, right Dan? I, I love cooking. Love yes, to cook. Love Dan cooking. is the cook in the family and he's very good at it. And one of the rules about cooking is you taste as you go and you make and adjustments. And you can just, yeah, you can just do whatever. I don't have this thing. I can add this thing in that works just the same. Yeah. You can't do that in baking. Right. It's a science. <laughs> it is a science. It's very, right. very So when you go to, particular. that's why when you uh, go to try out a recipe and it says however much cake flour and you're like, I don't have cake flour, cake flour. I'm going to use AP flour and it doesn't turn out. And then you go into cake noobs and you're like, well, I cake that like, well, did you follow the recipe? That's always my first question because a lot of times people don't and they think that or it's not, vodka gonna, instead of water it's not gonna make a difference and it does. So um, most recipes are formulated already where they have worked out the ratio of flour to sugar to leaveners, which is what you know makes the cake rise and stuff. The other um, thing that you must follow when you are baking from scratch is the method or the instructions. You cannot just take um, ingredients when you're baking from scratch, throw it into a bowl, mix it up like you do with cake box mix, mm -hmm, and right. it turn out. It just won't happen. So um, there's two different mixing methods you can use, There, at least that I know of. There's the, the traditional method where you cream the sugar and the butter until it's light and fluffy. You add in your eggs until they are combined. Then you start with your dry, then you add wet, dry, wet, dry. You always begin and end with dry. This could be another cool live thing that we could do, talk about baking from scratch. That's how Yolanda does hers. Works really well. The way that I do mine is called reverse creaming, where I combine the flour with the butter. 
And what that does is that butter coats all of the flour to even further make it more delicate and, and tender. And then you add in your other ingredients so that when you mix it together, it's, uh, the gluten is not able to be as activated because it is covered in butter. So covered in butter. How can anything covered in butter not be delicious? That sounds like the name of your next band. Yes, covered in butter. So hopefully that answers the question. Was there another one that you had, Michelle? Um, no? Okay, cool. All right, so let's get it moving out of here. Do okay. you have any other questions about cake, Dan? Are you, are, do you feel fully knowledgeable now? I feel like my brain's going to explode from all this knowledge, so. Yes, that's good. Yeah. Uh, one thing I was going to have you too is um, sometimes people will say that they don't like the taste of the cake because. Because they don't like cake? <laughs> sometimes. I only like vodka. Sometimes people will say they don't like the flavor of a cake because they taste it when it comes out of the fridge. Oh. Cold cake does not taste good. Yeah. Cold, like, like, if you've ever tried to put hard butter on top of your toast. <laughs> Mute, Michelle! <laughs> put hard butter on top of um, your toast, it's not, it's not very palatable, right? Okay. It doesn't taste yeah. good. Room temperature butter tastes good. Excuse me. Oh. So, um, if you're trying out a new recipe, honestly, Magic trash can over there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the best time to taste your cake is when it's at room temperature. You know, whenever I'm cleaning up, I always just take all the mess that I have and just throw it into a drawer. <laughs> That's what that is. Yeah. It's the trash drawer. <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, also when you deliver your cakes, I chill my cakes before delivery. You know, you want to give some time for the cake to be outside or at room temperature so that it comes to... You know, um, what do you call it? Like room, room temperature. temperature. Yeah. Are we live? Yeah. Um, Explain what happened, Dan. Uh, Facebook sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. You know how it is. Like you, you do a Facebook live, and you're like in the middle of proposing to somebody, and then the Facebook live like crashes or it ends or something like that. It's just part of the show. So we had. <laughs> 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 we, we had a problem. It's just nothing. It's just Facebook just canceled it, it's our live. It's kind of a convenient place for it to end. We yeah. basically stopped with part one. Yeah. So if you were just joining us and you for some reason weren't watching the previous live we were just doing, uh, we were talking all about the different flowers. I was making fun of box mix. Yeah. It's not that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that's the first part of our, our show here today. And now we're going to continue on with part two. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. There's a second one? <laughs> Late. How are cakes like onions, Dan? They have layers? Yes, dang it. You stole my joke. <laughs> I started to say it, and then I was like, oh, I'm going to be funny. I feel like a donkey now. <laughs> So, uh, one of the questions that somebody posted in Cake Noobs, which um, I loved, I actually loved this question, oh, yeah? which was, what is a cake layer? And we had a couple snarky people in there that I was like, delete, get out, because it's <laughs> Cake Noobs, you're supposed to be able to feel safe in there to ask whatever question right, you want. Right, right. So many people in this thread, what is a layer? What is a tier? How many layers should you have in a cake? Do you know what a cake layer is? Uh, it, it's, a, it, it's a piece of cake. <laughs> it's a layer of cake, Correct. right? <laughs> Correct. You have, you have the cake, and then you have buttercream, yeah. and then you have cake. Yes. And you have buttercream, and you have cake. Yes. So how, right? when you think about a cake slice, how many layers of cake do you think that you imagine inside uh, of a cake? When my hypnotist asks me, and I'm in that state, that fugue state, I see in my head two <laughs> colored strips. So if I'm eating strawberry cake, it's like straw. It's like cake, strawberry cake, strawberry cake. So two strips. Of when I'm in that fugue cream? state, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> it just means you're like out of it. You're like completely <laughs> like out of it. It's just spitting on me. Like calm down. It's the fugue state. You start spitting. <laughs> I just remember watching Breaking Bad, and, and the, the main guy used that as an excuse to get out of selling drugs once. You guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> like Brian Cranston. I have a really you know, bad memory. Walter White, he was like, I, I don't know. Okay, so anyways, layers, yes, correct, are the... Two. The slight, <laughs> there's not necessarily a certain number. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's one of the things that I think trips people up, is that they think that there's supposed to be a certain amount of layers within a cake tier. Okay. A tier being... 
the whole cake that's all buttercream together with the different layers of buttercream in between. Okay. What, does that not make sense? No, it does. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still laughing about, like, the, what was I, where was I going with that? I don't know. This is my life every day. It's like, I don't even get my own jokes as I'm saying them. You know how many times a day I say, so anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so let's talk, so let's talk about the cake layers here. Um, I'm going to show you how to make a cake with cake layers. Oh! Have you ever done this before? No. <laughs> Are you scared? Oh. oh, am I cutting the layers? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going to show you how, though. Okay. Because I, I thought it would be great if you did it because you're a noob. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, okay. This is a turntable. Two turntables. This is called, turntable. this is called <laughs> a turntable. Yeah, well, I, I thought that the whole thing was one turntable, so oh. you're like pulling stuff off. I'm like, is this like a Transformers turntable? It's actually like, it's actually something else. So this is Yolanda Gamp's, um, it's like a five-year-old. <laughs> what if it just flies off? Oh. <laughs> See? Okay, so can you just focus, please? Yes. Be serious. I'm focusing. This is a serious show. No time for jokes. All right. So this is Yolanda Gamp's uh, cake okay. recipe. It's all in one big, tall layer. Uh, I used a four-inch cake pan from Fat Daddy-O's. Oh. You can either do multiple pans for shorter layers, or mm -hmm. you can do the big, tall pans for one layer. It's just really a preference. Though. I'm a big fan of Fat Daddy-O pans. Yes. They yes. are the best. They're my favorite. I mean, I don't know if they're the best. They're just, they are my favorite, though, but I mean, they're kind mm -hmm. of the best. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to show you, remember how we, we cut the dome off of the other cake? Yes. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. So this is baked yesterday, chilled in the fridge, so the butter is what? Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. So when you bake these pans, or when you bake these cakes, how do you get them out of the pan? Um, for these particular cakes, I let them cool for 10 minutes, and then in the pan, I run my pan, my, my knife along the edge of the pan on the okay. inside of the cake, okay. straight up and down, and then you just flip the pan over onto a cookie sheet cooling rack, pop off the pan. It's one of those things that has the, it's, it's like the lines of, of yes. wire. Yep, yep. Okay. That thing so you, that's so always just, on the countertop and has crumbs underneath of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you let it sit for 10 minutes and then you cut yep. around the edge and then you, you don't cut. flip it over. You're not cutting. Oh, you're okay. just putting your knife in between the cake and the pan so that if anything's sticking, you're releasing it. Oh, okay, okay. And then you flip it over and, and then you let it cool till it's, for probably at least 30 minutes until it's, it, you okay. know, smaller cakes cool faster. So at least till it's um, pretty cool. You don't wrap it right away. No. Then you wrap it in plastic wrap and I put mine into the fridge overnight or you can put it into the freezer for like an hour if you're in a hurry. Okay. Right? But the freezer is like... That's like driving don't 55 Don't forget 20. about it. Just don't forget about it in the freezer. You yeah. don't want it to be frozen. That's dangerous. So turn your cake over. Okay. It's like Christmas. <laughs> and wrap. I think I might need some... Don't mind me behind you. I might need some non-skid mats here. This is cleaning her hands with her drawer assistant. Okay. Um... Let's see. So small cakes, first of all, are a little bit harder to frost in general because they don't have a lot of weight. Right? We're starting out with the hardest. Yes. Yes, you're welcome. All right. So the first thing... Oh, yeah. Michelle, what do you got? One lady wants to know, do you use goop or baking paper to line your t um, tins? Good question. Dan's like, what is goop? I do not use goop. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I do use goop. Goop is um, homemade pan release. So you can't just put batter into a pan and then bake it up and have it come out, it'll stick. Oh, okay. So some people use spray pan release. Oh, right, some right, right. Some people will, will um, use butter or... Sometimes um, you, you dust them, right? Yeah, I used to yeah. do it that way. I used to do the vegetable shortening, dust with flour, and then batter. But that um, is messy. Mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, it's always flour all over everything. So cake goop is when you combine equal parts, vegetable oil, flour, AP flour, and... Um, vegetable and shortening goop. and you mix it until it's a paste and okay. it's like goop like it looks like a uh, Elmer's glue and then you just throw it in the pan you have the pan here you just go <laughs> and it just goes <laughs> good point um, you actually want to put a really thin layer oh yeah well, okay more cake goop is not good okay you want to okay. just do a little paper towel a thin layer on your pan pour your batter in no need for parchment and it results Sounds in great. very easy release yeah, yeah it's cheap 
and it doesn't go bad. You just leave it in a container on the countertop and it's good to go for pretty much ever. Okay. All right, so we're going to remove the dome off of the top of this cake so okay. that it is level, right? All right. Are you nervous about that? I don't know. <laughs> so the way that it's I... like, when have you ever done something for the first time live on television <laughs> in front of people that you don't know that could make fun of you? You can't hear them if they make fun of you, though. That's yeah, the nice thing. You never know. I'll read um, the messages, Dan. <laughs> we'll, we'll have, I'll have people private messaging me. You're an idiot. Okay, so when, we're, when you're in pastry school, what they teach you is actually to, to eyeball this so that you learn to skin off, they call it skinning, which is really not very appetizing well, sounding, but... it would be skinning if you cut into your hand, right? Yeah, which is what we don't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, you don't want to waste any of this cake, right? Okay. We don't, we've, we've put expensive eggs, flour, butter, sugar in here. We don't want to waste it. Okay. So we want to just do something where we're just barely taking off the top layer of cake to reveal the crumb, but we don't want to like cut way down into it, right? Okay. So I'm just going to come, it may, I think I might need to switch spots with you so oh, you can see okay. my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to move that cake that way? Oh, you can't cut my cake? No, I'm sorry. So we're going to come just right below the, the top of here. Okay. And we're going to start making a cut in. And you see how right you here... You totally screwed up. No, you see how this dips down right there? <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's more important that you keep your knife level okay. than for you than to worrying than, about than worrying about that little piece of, of um, dip okay. down. Because, okay. you know, sometimes your cake doesn't bake up perfectly level. So you didn't screw up. The cake screwed up. That's right. By I could, being I could, born that way. I could probably just come to, like, the lowest okay. point. Like, if you just look at this, this is the lowest point right there, right? right? right. So if I come there... And okay. I'm holding my cake. Watch first, then do. <laughs> I should probably use the, use the right. sharp side of the knife okay. here. Okay. Pay attention, though, first before you go. So that in pastry school, this okay. is called a demo. Right? So I'm going to so demo. So I'm not supposed to do anything. not supposed to do anything. Okay. So you're going to watch me and what I'm doing, and then you're going to do it. And okay. I'm going to watch you. Okay? <laughs> I'm such a noob. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tan, this is a demo. <laughs> you don't do anything. You just watch. Oh, Okay. Okay. Shh. okay. Hand on top of the cake here, nice okay. and flat. I'm keeping my uh, knife nice and level. This is practice, right? Right. So right. if you take make a little cut, make sure I'm keep staying level. Okay. Come over here, make another little cut. Make sure I'm still staying level. And basically, what I'm doing is I'm coming all the way around the cake first. No more than a quarter of an inch. I'm cutting oh. into the cake, right? Okay. This is going to be my guiding line. Understand? So I've cut, you see, I've, I've got all the way around now. I've made and you a, haven't screwed up when you went all the way around because like well, but, sometimes when I do stuff like that, I, I, I go all the way around a watermelon and then I'm like two inches off. And that's why it's, you know, it's practice. Like you might, okay. you probably won't do this perfectly the first time. Maybe you will, what but that, that would be awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'd be such a good teacher. <laughs> So, I, I'd be a prodigy, like, this whole time I'm a cake master, and, and I just didn't even know it. Suddenly, I'm like, Dan, can you just go ahead and level this cake for me? I'm like, what? Uh, see, All that's right. why I purposely didn't learn this stuff. So, now that we have our guiding line, I'm going to continue going around in a circle, keeping my cake, my, um... You're sorry. still going around in a circle? I'm following the line that I made. Okay. You understand? So, yes. I'm just cutting, yes. making little cuts... And now you're like an inch in or two inches. And my inches. thumb is nowhere down on the side. It's flat on top. And I'm continuing to go around. And I'm almost cut through the center. And at the very okay. end, I'm just going to bring my hand to the side to just, I can feel it's released its tension because I've cut all the way through. Okay. And this is the top of the cake, right? Oh, it looks great. So this is just the browned part of the cake that's kind okay. of, you know, domed depending on the you know, cake that you've made, it might be a little bit yes. more domed or less domed. These are pretty flat. They are pretty flat, which is why I was confused about the dome. Right. Where's the dome? All right, now, just be careful. No cutting our fingers live. Okay, that's far enough. Okay. And then rotate. There you go. I feel like I'm doing this wrong. No, you're doing great. Rotate. Fingers together. Yep. There you go. Keeping your... Nice, nice and level. It's looking good. Is this like the first time you've ever even cut a cake? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, awesome. I, I've cut cake slices at weddings. Before, okay, so you feel so you've gone all the way around now, right? Yes, yes. So keep your hand in the center. Okay. It's okay for your knife to go underneath. 
There you go. Keep going. Why am I not turning this? Because you've already have a guy. Your knife. Oh, your knife is I, following the I guy. I thought you were still going around. We'll have to rewatch this one. <laughs> okay, who so was you're right. you're almost all the way through now. So then you put your hand, hand over here. and just be very gentle. Don't you know? Accidentally cut into your hand. There you go. Good job. It's okay. So you just you just have one little spot part. right there where it's a little bit domed in the center. Go ahead, Michelle. What kind of knife is best for this? A bread knife. So a bread knife just has a serrated edge. That's what Dan is using right now, which is a... a um, this is a Cutco knife. Cutco uh, bread knife, which I feel is almost too long. The knives we used in pastry school were like this long. They were massive. Oh. But, so what do I do about that piece? So you can come back. See how it's just a little bit domed? Just a tiny bit. Uh -huh. Honestly, it's you don't even have to fix that. I was doing great until you, really, you started helping me. You really don't have to, but you can just, you already have your guide here. I'm yeah. just ignoring that like I didn't say that. <laughs> you have your guide here, like your your um, part that you started with. So yep. you can, using that as a guide, keeping your knife against that edge and this edge. So you're not going to cut into this edge, you're just kind of guiding it and going yep. along like that. Yep. Okay. Your, so that first cut is the guide for your knife. So I see. So you hold your knife flat as you're cutting more and more towards the center, and that keeps it level. Nice. So you just torted your... Well, you haven't torted it yet, but you've, just, done you've leveled your cake, right? Oh, right, yeah. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is the torting, which is, okay. remember, we talked about, which is dividing the cake into multiple layers. So this is one layer, technically, right? right. So we want to have this. This is a very thick layer. It is a very thick layer. <laughs> so I don't know about you guys, but I like buttercream between my cakes, mm -hmm. <laughs> my cake layers. Yep. So we want to break up the... Um, ratio of cake to buttercream, right? Right, that makes sense. You also visually want your layers to be even, the same thickness, right? This is so complicated. <laughs> Come on, Dan. <laughs> Stick with me here. <laughs> Don't make it sound like it's hard. You're not going to want to do it. <laughs> so um, I'm going to show you the cheater way and then talk about why you should do the cheater way instead of buying a fancy cutting tool like an Agbe or uh, I don't know, there's like Wilton things, there's all kinds of like special techniques that you can use. Okay. This is one that I really feel strongly about, and of course it's just my opinion, it's not fact or anything. Although sometimes I like to pretend like my opinions are facts. <laughs> I really think this is an important skill to know how to do without a, a tool. It, yeah. Then your knife is your most important tool, and to just be able to do this by eye will save you time. You know? when, when the power goes out and you don't have your special tool. That's right. Here's a ruler. Oh. Tell me how tall your layer is. Uh, okay. Let's see here. It is... You know what? We can also move this. It's one. almost exactly... Th it's like exactly three inches. Go ahead and remove your plastic, too. We don't need that. Okay. It's just getting in the way. There you go. It's like exactly three inches. Good. Exactly. It's not in the center. Mine is uh, pretty much three inches, too. I think yours is a little bit... I, I can tell that mine's a little high on one side, but that's fine. I was trying to get into the center. Do like a potter wheel thing. So anyways. <laughs> this is almost exactly three inches. All right, so uh, we know half of three inches. Inch and a half. That's inch and a half? Shut up. Okay. So what you're going to do is take these toothpicks, and at an inch and a half, you're going to put a toothpick in and mark it, right? Okay. And then the width of the ruler... Come over again. Until this looks like the Hellraiser guy. Right? I was just thinking that. <laughs> okay, so you do that. I'm going to okay. do mine. Alright. Actually, I'm not going to do mine. I'm, I'm just, actually going to see... come over this way and do it this way so I'm not getting my head in the way. This is also not a great turntable, so it might be like... Okay. So I'm just letting you know that if the okay. turntable feels crazy, that's just, you know... The that's table. just me. That's just you. It's all in your head. It's not the turntable at all. Mm-hmm. Turntable do we have any questions while Dan is toothpicking? We do not. Okay. Everybody's like, this is so easy. They're loving you, Dan. You guys are great together. <laughs> <laughs> Dan was so nervous. He's like, what if they hate me? It's like, since when has anybody ever hated Dan? Exactly. I don't remember if I said that. It's like people saying, like, nobody likes the class clowns. Like, mm. everybody likes the class clown. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're just giving ourselves some guides. Um... Especially if you've never ever torted a cake before, it can be really hard and confusing on you know to practice being level. So in school, so you make it look like pin pinhead or whatever his name is, and then screw pinhead, yeah. 
So in, in pastry school, they teach you to basically um, visually find the center of a layer, right? So if I come here, come down to the side here, my head's level to the, the cake, and I'm gonna cut in about, um, oh my God, I was like, is there a bug on me? <laughs> There's gonna be a spider on me live on camera. Like that all ran through my head in like one second. You were like, whoa, 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 spider. No, it's just your husband. Pretty much. <laughs> You're never gonna do a class with me, that's for sure. So I'm visually trying to see the distance between the top and the bottom. Now I'm all like, <laughs> and I'm cutting in one, one quarter inch, visually keeping it centered until I meet up with the line that I've already created there. And then once I have my guide, I can start cutting and turning and just keeping my knife level. And praying, oh God, oh God, I hope this is right. I feel, this is one of the things I'm really good at. Because I've, I've never used a, a cake leveler or anything. I've always used just a knife. So mm -hmm. I can level a cake pretty, pretty close. It's almost exactly the same size. Nobody would ever measure that and be like, mm, right, at, a, at a wedding. Visually, that's pretty pretty close. So like, I, I grew up on a cake farm, and this is not real cake. And you might have noticed it was a little bit difficult for me cutting through that, because it is a little bit cold in the center. So, okay. So it's yeah. like cutting through cold butter. Oh. Right? So, so hard. It is a little bit difficult. So you're going to use your toothpicks as a guide. Okay. Oh, my Please, God. Yeah, just be careful. There you go. Making your guideline. I've never actually seen the Hellraiser movies. I was going to make a Hellraiser joke, but I don't know anything about them. So. I think there's a cube, right? Like, don't open the box or something. I don't know. So um, how this toothpick thing helps you is it helps you to visually practice, right? So you're, so you're still teaching yourself the knife movements. You're still learning how to do this process, but you're giving yourself a guide so that you're not completely messing up a cake that took you, you know, hours to bake and expensive ingredients and things. All those important eggs. <laughs> and vanilla being Vanilla really, is very vanilla expensive, Vanilla is crazy yeah. expensive right now. I almost didn't put vanilla into these cakes <laughs> because it's so expensive, and I was like, well, we're going to be tasting them. Rationing it out. Okay, go ahead. Cut through. Look how easy that was, Dan. Oh. Boom. You just torted your let cake. Me, let me see how... Is it... It's pretty close. It's like just as good as yours. Yeah. I'm Liz Merrick. <laughs> you can put your toothpicks back in here. You know, this was so easy. <laughs> Liz Merrick. <laughs> Shall talk. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have our uh, torta cakes. We could do that. We you, could, you couldn't even tell. You could do if that this again. was mine or if it that's was right. Yours, except for all the that's how easy it marks. is. That's how easy it is. So it does take a little bit longer to use the toothpicks, but honestly, once you do it a few times, you start to be able to do it without the toothpicks. And if your cake was a little bit crooked, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. okay. You know, don't worry about it. Don't feel like you've ruined your cake. And if you've ever had too much vodka, you can always go back to the toothpick method to make sure if you're. If you're cutting your cakes, you know, I, a little He's talking much. like he's drunk, but he is stone sober, <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I don't even like that. Okay, so uh, now we're going to put some buttercream between these guys. Okay. Are you, are you excited? My confidence is building with everything right? that I'm doing here. All right, so let's move our cakes off to the side here. Get your cakes off your table, please. Off to the side? We actually don't need these anymore. We don't even need the cakes anymore. So this is a little, uh, you know what these are. We use these in deliveries a lot. Yeah, those are no skid mats, That's right? That's right. Uh, where you, you put your couch it's like on it. a shelf liner. And we, we throw our trash into the drawer. Yes. <laughs> you can't think that we really have. I'm loving this drawer thing. You just, somebody else cleans it up, right? Somebody else's problem. Is this another trash drawer? <laughs> yes. All right, so you just put a little non-skid square there. Okay. To help our cake to not slide around. This is if we're getting, if we're doing high speed 
buttercream, right? High yeah. speed torten. Uh, and we're like, it's just, it's Whoa! just, to, it's just to help the cake to not slide around. Okay. So that's okay. literally, it's literally to stop if, from skidding. If you're going fast. No, right? just any speed. Okay. What's uh? If you're going slow. Is? You know what this is? This is cardboard. Uh, not just cardboard. It's a cake board. So oh, okay. We so bought, this is you can like buy a special these. cake side, right? When I first started cake decorating, I had no idea where where to buy cake supplies. I, you know, we let's when we lived right next to Michaels, and it was like everything there was super <laughs> expensive. It's like eight dollars for a cake board. You right, know? right. That that sounds funny. Just going to say, to buy, like, I didn't know where to buy cake supplies right next to Michaels. It, just, it sounds funny, right? Well, I mean, that's the, that's when we lived next to Michaels, and that's where I bought my cake right. supplies. I, right. And that's really the only place I knew to get them. So nowadays, um, you can buy things a lot online through Amazon. You can, That's it's right. It's so much cheaper. You can like yeah. ten dollars. You can buy a whole case of six-inch cardboard rounds that'll last you a year. You know, yeah. Yeah. instead of paying three dollars a piece of them from for Michaels, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is your spatula. Oh, okay. Congratulations. I don't think I got myself a spatula. The one thing I forgot. Well, then this is a big deal. Yes. I have the only spatula. I thought I had little ones too, but maybe I don't. Is there a different technique that you can use that doesn't require a spatula? No. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. You just entertain the masses while I go get a spatula. Oh, okay. So, um, have you guys seen Wonder Woman? Seen the new Wonder Woman movie? It's really good. It's really good. And um, it was really exciting because Liz is really into Wonder Woman. And it, it, it always feels good. When you go to see a movie that's about a character that like your spouse likes, really, and the movie's like really good, it's not bad. Like um, some of these, some of these other superhero movies, you know, the hero is like murdering women or whatever, and you're like, oh, I don't really you're, like. You're sitting there in the theater and you're kind of like looking over at your spouse and you're kind of like, oh god, this is kind of a rough movie. Wonder Woman was great. It was great. So I just I wanted to make a joke. If you were like an Amazon and you were getting up out of your bed. Like, the alarm goes off, and you just, like, open your eyes, and, oh, and, like, you just shoot out of bed. All the clothes would come out of the drawers of, your, like, your dresser and go onto you, and you'd land, and you'd, like, oh, and you'd kick the toothbrush, and the toothbrush would go over, and it would hit the toothpaste, and the toothpaste would fly out, and it'd go into your mouth. Like, the, tooth, the toothpaste... I'd leave them alone for one The toothbrush second. would bounce off the wall, and it would go in. The toothpaste would go on the toothbrush, and it'd go in your mouth. And then you poo and you'd spit, it'd hit the water, the, the faucet would turn on. Like, if you were a, an Amazon, that's how you'd get ready for in the morning. <laughs> so, anyways. <laughs> so. That's great. <laughs> Alright, so I got my spatula. Okay. This is our buttercream here. Yes. Um, I'm gonna demo Dan. Okay. Oh, okay. Good job. All right. <laughs> So uh, I'm using my Easy Buttercream. Easy Buttercream is, you guessed it. Easy. It's easy? It's um, a meringue-based buttercream, but you don't actually have to make meringue. So you remember back in the day when I was making buttercream? It's getting easier. You had to put the egg whites over the double boiler, dissolve the sugar. Yeah. It, this is literally, you just put the pasteurized egg whites in there, the sugar, I'm just, and the butter. I'm just thinking about all the dishes that I did. Mm, it's yes, making me stressed. Yes, yep. So... <laughs> Yeah. Days are gone, Dan. Yes. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> Those dishes can't hurt you no. anymore. <laughs> so um, that's what I'm just using if you're curious as far as what the buttercream is. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is put a little bit on the board to glue the cake to the cake board, right? Okay. The bottom of the cake is the brown side. The top of the cake is what I put down. This is usually the ugly side. What? The ugliest side is the top, right? Okay. So put that side down first. Get that glued on there. And then we're going to take some buttercream. Not too much. We want about a quarter inch of buttercream, right? Oh, okay. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more on there because you can always scrape off the edge. This extra. looks like a ton. It does look like a ton, right? And proper spatula technique, right? Thumb in. People, well, it's more of like the movement. Okay. People tend to want to go like this. Oh, they want to make a peak. Yeah. yeah. It's just a natural way of kind of holding the spatula. So really, you're just using the tip of the spatula. So you're like kind of focusing on your elbow being up? It's more just you're, more. you're focusing on the levelness of your spatula, and you're using the tip, right? So okay. So I'm okay. going back and forth and rotating my cake in a circle. You see how it's like I don't even have enough. Yeah, yeah. 
So now I'm just going in a, a, a motion that's towards myself. I'm gonna have to add more. So first we smooth it down to get it flat. So much buttercream. And then we hold your spatula nice and level. It's like I'm petting it. Okay. I'm like petting it towards me, right? Who's a good kid? Who's, Who's a good kid? Who's, Who's a good kid? He's so yummy. Oh, so such a cute kid. Look at you. And so you want to smooth this buttercream all the way to the point that it is overflowing the edges. You didn't put enough buttercream down to stick your cake. It's, it's the problem with the six inch rounds. Oh, it's not heavy. It's, it's hard, right? Yes, it's the hardest one. We're still doing it the hardest way. Okay, so you see how all of my buttercream is all the way off the edges of the cake? Okay. That's what we want. Looking with my eyes, it looks level, right? This is something that we'll probably be pretty, you know, better at than the average person because we went to graphic design school and you visually are used to spacing things and seeing if they're level or crooked or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely something you can learn. You can teach yourself how to do that, right? Right. So if I was just learning and I'm like, is that level? There isn't a level looking gene that you can't have. But we do it's have all talent. But we do have these tools called levels. <laughs> yes. So you can literally I have a level that I don't have anymore but, but anybody I, could learn how to Anybody do this. can use a level right. to to train your eyes to see, you know, this is like you could use a tool forever or you can teach yourself to, you know, do this by hand. It's true. So you can use a level to help check to see if you have any high spots and then you, you know, just trim it down until it's level, right? Okay. And then you add the next layer. Bottom side up. Why? Uh, you're going to flip this over, right? Nope. This is the flattest, cleanest edge. Oh. Right? So okay. if you if you put the bottom side up, it's going to be the easiest to ice. I see. Right? So now I'm going to put another layer on top. So if it was a little bit crooked, you know. Your, your buttercream evens it out. So making it Is nice. Is there going to be any buttercream left for me? Oh, yeah. You'll be fine. We're just crumb coating. We're not <laughs> doing like a final thing here. I'm just kidding. It's so much. I had no idea you used this much to do a small little cake. Yeah. You always need a lot more buttercream than you think you do. So I brought this all the way out to the edge. It looks like you're doing it pretty thin too, right? It is. It's thinner than what a filling would be. Thinner than, than what we just did. Yeah. Okay. Also keep in mind that um, I didn't pre-mix this buttercream and it's been sitting overnight. So what happens is when your buttercream sits overnight is it gets spongy, which means it gets like holes in it. So you can see oh. I just keep having like these like, little <coughs> holes me. pop up in here. If you didn't drink all your water, you'd have something to sip on. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> here you go. So, um, that could just always whip your buttercream, or not whip, I should say, use the paddle attachment and mix it slowly for 10 minutes to get all of the air out of it, no pockets and such. Once you get the top flat, you can then go it's not ahead. Flat. It is flat. That is totally flat. It's, there's a lump right there. I know, but this is a crumb coat, so this is not the perfect layer. Oh, so you know it's, what a crumb it, it's coat just is? as flat as you say it is. Like, <laughs> <wait>. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is the top of the cake and the middle is flat. Okay, okay. So it's not... So you, you can actually have a little bit of variation here. Yeah, this what we're doing is we're sealing all of the crumbs of the cake into a layer of buttercream, and then we're going to chill it in the fridge okay. so that when we put our second layer of buttercream on it, um, none of those cake crumbs get into the buttercream. Oh, I which see. Which is important if we're not covering in fondant, not so important if you're not covering in fondant. Okay, okay. But all it in... It tastes just as good. <laughs> And maybe you're going for that, like, cookies and cream look. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just taking that extra buttercream that came out of the side of the cake, and I'm just flattening it. And as long as your whole, like, well, all your sides and your top is covered in buttercream, when you put it into the fridge, it will not dry out. And you're still doing, you're still focusing on the tip, right? Like, you're I, still I mean, kind of doing it this When I'm on way? the side, I'm using, actually, the whole length of the spatula. But there's no, like, you're, you're not going to, like, screw it up or... I'm, I'm just asking if there's any sort of techniques or something. I think that if you only use the tip, you would screw it up. But, like, when, when I'm doing it this way, I'm kind of focused on making... It's, it's natural to hold it this way, and I mm -hmm. want to hold it this way, mm -hmm. so I focus on this tip. If I'm doing this on the side, is there any sort of thing that I'm doing or just... You want to hold... hold you up? do want to use the spatula to, to 
um, push all of the buttercream evenly against okay. the cake. But you see how you can practically see through this cake. Yeah, yeah. Or see through the buttercream to the cake. Looks like one of those Pinterest cakes. It does, like a naked cake, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's all you need for the crumb coat. And I'm just taking this cake, this um, buttercream that's kind of bunched up around the edges. I'm just taking that off. Okay. And then I would put this into the fridge to chill overnight to put on the second layer. Okay, okay. All right, go all for right. it, Dan. You can do it. Okay. So I'm going to put this down. Mm-hmm. I'm going to move this. Around. And then I'm going to find my, my terrible edge, which I, it's this one. That's that right. one. That's right. The terrible and I'm going to put that down and computer. say, nobody's going to see you. <laughs> and then I'm going to put really more. put a lot mm -hmm. in here. I might have to go get some more buttercream. Oh my, oh my goodness. So you do this, I'll go grab some more. Okay. I got a whole bowl upstairs. So I'm just going to do this without the instructor in the room for the very first time, live, in front of people. I don't even really remember what I was, what I'm supposed to be doing here. You're petting. Oh, I'm petting it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot. You're a good little cake. You're a good little cake. Who's a good little Who's cake? I don't. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. I think I'm doing this wrong, actually. <laughs> I don't remember. I watched the demo, but. Welcome to culinary school, Dan. <laughs> It looks pretty even. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing some sort of thing with your hand going back and forth, and I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Do you want me? Do you want me to help you? Or well, I'd like a tip. Okay, so um, when you put, let's put some more. Okay. Cake on here first. No <laughs> Well, that's a different movie, right? Like this is Ghost. Right. Okay. So hold on to the spatula here. Let's get your cake back on the board. Okay. So you want to use this to just... Well, you're going back and forth, like feel, front feel, You feel what back. your wrist is doing, though? We're pushing it back and forward. I, okay, back okay. And, and then you're turning this. And then you turn. See, so we're pushing it from the center okay. outward, right? Okay. So once we've got to get it flat, then you're going to start at the back and kind of come towards you. And then pull up. So you, do you, you feel like you kind of have to push a little bit harder than you Whoop. think. So let's pet the kitty. It's like smother the kitty, pet the kitty, mm. smother the kitty. No. <laughs> so now, that's, see, that's a lot more level. Careful, you're getting a little bit crazy on the edge there. The sound effect is optional. It helps if it's the first time you're like, <laughs> Okay. It, and then I look, right? Yeah. I think that's pretty level. I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty darn level to me. And then I throw the bottom on the top. Mm -hmm. And like then that. before you push it down, look like this, right? And make sure that your edges... I almost are, destroyed that cake right there. Make sure your cake edges are lined up because it's very easy to do this. You okay. See, you see how this yeah, yeah, edge yeah. is hanging off? Uh-huh. So you want to make sure that your cakes are actually centered. Okay. And then you can push down. You know, you, do you understand why pushing down is important? It helps seal in the freshness <laughs> or get rid of bubbles okay so you don't want you don't want any trapped air in there so you're just okay. gonna get a little bit of a push so a little it, shake just a little bit a little bit Make that's sure. like when you're petting the cat and then you're like oh and you just get so excited about petting the cat and the cat's purring and you just go oh like that right people who don't like cats are gonna be like i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> I, I hate cats um so okay. we're going to do basically the same thing again. So put some more buttercream on top. Now, don't, don't show off. You're going to end up just throwing it on the ground. <laughs> what if I did? Like on the camera? <laughs> going to go to a commercial break? Um, <laughs> See, it's not in the middle. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> there we go. All right. Just move it to the middle. There you go. Like that. And then I'm going to do yep, the... Tip first. The, the pushing. Mm -hmm. All right, push a little bit harder. There you go. Am I drooling? <laughs> you sound like you're concentrating. <laughs> okay, remember when you go back now to, to tilt it back up. Right, right, right. So that's why you have got buttercream on. I, 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 I knew I made a mistake. <laughs> I have to point it out. 
I do, actually. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> trying to teach people how to do okay, this, right? Okay, so now you can go to pet the kitty. Okay, so now I'm petting the kitty. Yes. That's going to be a technical sugar cane yeah, child. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I yeah. was petting the cat, and then my cake got screwed up. <laughs> well, did you did you get really excited and shake? Actually, it? What's gonna happen is we're gonna start like a really bad um, rumor that we have cats while we're making cakes. <laughs> like, it's terrible. Did you pet the cat while you were icing the cake? Yes, I did. I did, that. I did it, and it still turned out bad. So now you're doming a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Get that flat in the middle. You, well, this motion is to push the buttercream to the edges, right? Okay. And also make it, so you got, you're missing some buttercream here. Okay. So you want to kind of push it to there. Push it this way. Yeah, but don't come all the way off the edge. Like you're coming to the edge and then you're like pushing down. Okay. So what I mean is like when you come to this, I'm going to use, I'm going to have you, I'm going to hold your hand so you can feel it, right? Okay. So when you're bringing the buttercream to here, don't push down and come off the edge. Just bring it to the edge and stop. Okay. That does was that, the, does whoop. that, yeah. You forgot the whoop. <laughs> so you see how we're pushing the buttercream so yes. that it's not doming at the, the edges. Doming at the edges? Yes. Like you're pushing it down. Okay. okay? Whoop. I just did it you right there. You just did it. Just right there. So it's just, a, it's like a, a, it's a muscle memory thing, you know, you learn. It's very delicate. I used to stand behind Michelle while she was doing this and just being like, eh, just keep hand You're wrong. Level. You're wrong. Level. You're wrong. <laughs> So now you're, you're in an okay spot. Go ahead and put some buttercream on the edge of your spatula and start smoothing it over the edge. Uh, the sides, I should say. Put some some buttercream on my spatula. Mm -hmm. And then plate thing. Bring it onto the side of the cake. Bring it on the side of the cake. And what do I do here? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't really see you doing this part. And I'm... You're, that's right. Okay. You just want to just coat the whole side of the buttercream, or the side of the cake with some buttercream. So you're kind of scraping it off. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's okay. I'm gonna I hold really, your hand I'm not here. really sure what I'm doing here. So you just need to push a little bit more. I need to rub it. a little bit more. <laughs> it's hard to know what kind of term to use. I don't know if I'll use that one. <laughs> I'm. Uh, am I petting a cat right now, or am I? Am, what am I doing to the cat? This side is just perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> there you go. A little bit more buttercream. Press, push it on there first, like really push it on there. There you go. And then use it to smooth that around. There you are. Okay. I'm getting it. Alright. Any tall parts, any, like tall parts of buttercream, like scrape those off. You see how this is kind of domed out? So scrape it like this? Yeah. Or yep. scrape it, no, wait, wait, like, wait. I'm just going to show you how to Am paint. I scraping it this way or yes. am I scraping it this way? Towards you. So you're, you're holding your angle like this. Okay. Like that. So that's why you kind of, it's important to hold your spatula straight up and down. Okay. I wonder if I was this bad at using buttercream the first time. Cake's like completely off the board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. You're doing Yeah, it. yeah. Well, no, it's it's fine. It's, uh, I don't expect to do really well when I'm But I think it's good for, for like noobs to see how hard it really is when you first start. Like people make it look so easy. Like when I'm doing it, it's like, oh, you just take the buttercream, put it on the side. It's so easy. But if you've never used buttercream before, it's like you don't understand how. Is this, is this right? You're doing, you're doing great. You just need to add some more. Oh, okay. Yep. So just keep adding some to cover all of the, the areas yep uh, at what point like is it cake number 10 that you're like feeling pretty good about Add this or there. like so everywhere cake number 100 or mm, just depends I guess on how that would be like you're like oh you're a really quick learner you know and I think it okay. also depends on how much you apply yourself to uh being able to look at your work and being like I need to improve on this or if you look at a terrible cake and you're like that's great Oh, that, that's, that's the best like, cake I ever made. It's, it's like dedicated yeah. learning or whatever. Yeah, you want, you want, Focus you can learning. look at your cake and be like, okay, this is where I need to improve. So I'm going to focus on that next time I'm doing that. I feel like my bottom of my bottom tier is much thicker than my top tier. It is. Tier. And that is just because your um, spatula is not straight up and down. But that's okay. Okay. Right? So now I'm going to show you a really quick trick. If you're having trouble getting your, um, uh, what's this called? Crumb coat. Stop. You're just like, ugh. I used to get a really bad um, shoulder ache from mm -hmm. holding my arm like that. Just think about doing like five cakes in a weekend. Yeah. It's like your shoulder ends up getting really sore. Especially if you suck like I do. <laughs> no, you don't suck. 
Oh, you just need practice. So much. This guy, bench scraper. Well, why didn't we start with that? Because I think a lot of people think you have to use a spatula. So I'm just wanting to oh, show, okay. you know, like like you, you think that that's what you I'm have just, to use. I'm just giving you a hard time. Bench scraper. Just hold this, this part, just flat against the uh, turntable. Okay. Right up against the tape. All the way until you feel the can edge you, of the edge of the board. Can you imagine being like, oh, I need shoulder surgery for this play I've been doing over whatever. And then someone's like, bench scraper. <laughs> You're like... No. I'm just smoothing out the top here. Okay. You see how it smushes off the edge? Yep. Just come back. Yep. Just bench scrape again. And that's actually how I finish my cakes too. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's say that this was chilled in the freezer, and then you could do your next layer, exact same way, but you finish with the bench scraper to do. We don't have time to do that today. Okay. But that's basically it. Cool. As far as doing that, how, what did you? How did you feel about that? Uh. You're tired? You feel exhausted? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I need, to, <laughs> sure. I need to watch a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Eat some chips. Yeah. Do we have any questions before we go? We don't see any on here. All right, cool. Okay, cool. So good. Okay, guys, so that is part two of episode one of Sugar Geek Show. Hopefully you've learned some things, and if not, you haven't learned anything, hopefully you've just enjoyed watching. Yeah. And that's our goal here. And uh, I don't know how often we're going to do these things. We're definitely going to... The, the hardest part is thinking of a, a topic. A topic right, to do, right, you yeah. Know, that takes an hour that we can teach within steps and things, so... Without, like, having a mixer on that's like... Mm. Yes, yeah, because a lot... you can say... You know, talking over the top. A lot of things like in baking, you know, takes time. It's like, okay, this is how you noise. bake it, and then you bake it, and then what does it look like, right? Yep. Yep. So, um, I definitely want to teach you guys some of the basics, things that we learn in pastry school, uh, right. fundamentals that people have a lot of struggles with, and we're going to teach Dan. So, he'll be like our resident noob mm -hmm. who will be learning these things since he doesn't, uh, you know, know what he's doing. So, you guys can see from the perspective of somebody who's trying to improve but d doesn't have muscle memory or really any knowledge whatsoever. Or talent, or coordination, <laughs> or... Any of those things. None of those things. Yep. <laughs> so uh, it'll be like, if Dan can do it, you can do it. <laughs> and he can't do that. So you guys are screwed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, again, if you have any ideas for topics that you would like to see in the future of Sugar Geek Show Live, go ahead and leave them in a comment. If we um, choose your topic, we will send you a Sugar Geek Show t-shirt. And yeah, so make them good. No copying each other. <laughs> I can see who did it first. You have anything to add, Dan? Um, no, just that. Uh, oh, we have a new tutorial coming out on Sugar oh, Geek right, Show right. on June fifteenth. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to talk about it at the all? The crystal cake. Yeah. The crystal cake. I'm very excited. So I have a couple of crystals here. Some examples of some of the crystals. Um, this is a new line of molds that's coming out with Simi Cakes uh, that I designed. There is a large one, a medium, and a small one. And I have a cake that's not here right now. I left it in Florida. <laughs> What's this made out of? Jello! Howdy, 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 ho. <laughs> it's a jiggly. Doing a little dance. A jiggly crystal. Yeah. yeah, so this is a new line of crystals that I, um, I looked and looked and looked for a mold that had these tall crystals instead of just like some really short ones or whatever. Yep. And I couldn't find any. So I ended up making one because that's what I do. And I used it for next month's tutorial, which is going to be a wedding cake featuring these crystals and a technique called kintsugi. It's coming out on the 15th of the this 15th, month. The 15th, yeah, a couple months, or a couple weeks. Yeah, uh, a uh, couple days. Days, not yeah. ranks. Mm -hmm. Months, weeks, days, it's all the same to me. It all runs together. Yep. So, um, yeah, so you're going to be learning how to not only use the mold and make these beautiful crystals, but also how to make a gorgeous wedding cake. And it's actually probably my most favorite wedding cake I've made. It looks great, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So that's it. That's coming out on the 15th. The gift for um, the first of the month, if you were an elite member, is uh, some cake lace from Swank Cake Design and a mold. Oh, wow. I know. Double awesomeness. That's pretty cool. So if you've been waiting to sign up, which, if you are already signed up, then you would have got the really cool gold from Truly Mad Plastics. Yeah, that the was gold last highlighter month's gift. just got sent out, yeah. Yes, so um, this month is going to be some really cool cake lace. So. Cool. All right. Okay, guys, that is it. I'm, we can end this live properly, not with just a sudden cutoff of internet. Yeah, yeah. Facebook <laughs> we, didn't ruin us this time. 
Thank you guys so much for watching our very first Sugar Geek Show live. I'm Liz Merrick. This is Dan Merrick. I'm Dan. We'll see you guys next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.